8.30, the CPI report came out 8.6%. They were expecting 8.3 for year over year. Not a good scenario. So the SPY, the Qs tanking. We have oil taking a bit of a breather. The, the dollar rocked all the way up to 14, uh, 104, excuse me. And then you could take a quick look at gold. Uh, gold popped on the news. Uh, you just, this is a bearish thing. This is a bearish thing because with inflation being so hot, many market participants are assuming that this is going to force the Federal Reserve to be more hawkish. That will help battle inflation, but a side effect of being more hawkish is creating an environment that's not so accommodative for really businesses. Thus, uh, really the side effect in the market is that things go down, 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 down. That's where we're at today. So I don't know if I need to be more clear about this, but in terms of the overall market, I am obviously bearish today and in the short term. So for the remainder of today, probably going into next week, I'm going to stay bearish because it's not a good scenario. And when you really start to unpack the numbers and look at some of the things that are going on relative to wages, looking at what's going on with mortgages, looking at what's going on in the world of energy, this is why I'm telling you, yes, recently we saw a pop. I kept telling you bear market rally, bear market rally, bear market rally. I do not think we've seen the 2022 low in the markets quite yet because you got to be a little bit realistic about the overall scenario. It is not a good overall scenario. The Dow down 1.24%, S&P down 1.4%, the Nasdaq down 1.7%, oil popping 121.50, and yields obviously going up because now the chance of a June, July, and August 50 bips rate increase is extraordinarily high. Before you've heard of 25 points from the Fed at the FOMC meetings, now the next three, very, very, very good chance it's going to be a 0.5% rate increase just because that's one of the tools that the Fed has its, at its disposal to fight inflation. The other thing is quantitative tightening, which is a little bit even more extreme. Right now, instead of doing all the buying, buying, buying that they did during the Rona era, now they're doing selling, selling, selling to the tune of $47.5 billion a month. And in September, they're going to double that up to $95 billion. So those are some of the numbers you need to know and understand what's going on with QT, aka quantitative tightening. That's one tool. And the other one is raising interest rates. And with interest rates, we're already starting to see kind of an impact on that on mortgages. We're seeing a, a drop off in mortgage demand, which means less and less people are going out to buy houses, which is kind of interesting. Demand's dropping, but to my understanding, that particular market, the supply is already so constrained that prices are staying elevated, but there is concern about the current trend of what's going on in the world of real estate. So let's get into some very, very quick things, and then let's get into some degenerate trading. Wall Street is in a holding pattern ahead of key inflation report. Well, as you can see, the inflation report came out and the market is getting its teeth kicked in. Consumer prices last month are expected to remain highly elevated. The numbers that you need to know are this. Over the past month, it came in at 1%. The expectation was 0.7. If you're excluding food and energy, it came in at 0.6. They were expecting 0.5. Year over year, we're up 8.6%. Uh, which is a 6% year-over-year increase, they were expecting 8.3%. Energy is up 3.9% on the month. Food is up 1.2% on the month. Over the past year, gas is up 50% and food is up 12%. Weekly earnings are down 0.7%. So if I were to summarize that for you, it's fucked. National average for gas prices, just one cent below $5 per gallon. That is a new all-time record. Two stay-at-home stocks get crushed on signals of weak business. Uh, what is this? Stitch and DocuSign. So if you got some Stitch Fix or DocuSign puts, congratulations to you. Capital Riot House Panel blames Trump for January 6th attempted coup. Um, so when it rains, it pours. When everything is going haywire, why not throw some other things into? Because, uh, hey, it's fun. Let's like just get extreme volatility, apparently. Billionaire invested David Einhorn sees gold rising much higher and says the Fed is bluffing about its ability to tame inflation. I don't know if they're bluffing. I think they're just saying what they need to to, I don't know, keep their jobs, make sure that people don't full on panic. But I find it comical. Um, at one point, they're like, don't worry about it. Like, oh, OK, it's transitory. Of like, oh, the only reason we're here is because of Putin. Like all of this shit, maybe you maybe you're just not that good at your job. I get it. You weren't handed the easiest job, but. I mean, you should also literally be an expert in that field. But we're being told by the Fed, it's transitory. Don't worry about it. It's going to go away. We're being told by the Treasury Secretary that, hey, we're not going to a recession. Everything's fine. Like, inflation's high, but we'll take care of it. I don't like this concept of being overly optimistic. And I also don't think they should be pessimistic. 
just be realistic of like, okay, we see this. When we see these data points, this is exactly what we do. But they keep telling us, we're not even that far behind the curve. We got this under control. Don't you worry. The fuck you do? Do you just see what happened? Like, we're getting crushed right now. And then they're sitting there like, yeah, no, we got it under control. Like, are you fucking kidding me? It's ridiculous. U.S. mortgage applications are in meltdown and the threat to house prices is growing, an economist says. So basically, mortgage rates are going up and the demand for new mortgages are going down. The U.S. housing market is seeing its worst contraction since 2006 as mortgage applications crumble, says Freddie Mac economist. So once again, yes, Real estate is still extremely high, but that's more because of a massive lack of supply. But right now, what we've seen roughly over the past month, month and a half, is a big downtrend in the desire for new mortgages. Billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller. I love that name. Like what that that sounds like you're a billionaire investor. If your last name is Druckenmiller, hell yeah, you're a billionaire investor. It says we're six months into a bear market and it still has a way to run. So We're in a bear trend. We're making lower highs. We're making lower lows. We're definitely in a bear trend ever since we found out that they were going to get into quantitative tightening. Remember that FOMC meeting on January 5th? This is the day where everything changed. This is the day where Voldemort tried to kill Harry Potter and it fucking backfired on him. This is D-Day. This is whatever you want to call it. But January 5th is when we got the meeting minutes from the December FOMC meeting. And they said, hey, we're no longer doing quantitative easing. We're going to do quantitative tightening. And that's the difference between the Fed buying everything and selling everything. It's very, very evident. The Fed right here in March said, hey, we're going to do quantitative easing. It ripped, it ripped, it ripped, it ripped. And then they said, we're going to do quantitative tightening. And now we're selling, selling, selling. Sometimes it's easy to overcomplicate this. And then other times you could just make it so comically easy, so comically easy to understand. Fed buys everything. Fed announces it can then start selling everything. And since then, lower highs, lower lows. Sometimes it could be explained with something as simple as that. I, once again, to reiterate, still think the overall market's going down. If you look at the SPY, the Qs, the Russell, whatever you want, the overall market, I think there's more pain to endure. And the argument that, no, we've already seen the bottom, I think it's a very, very weak argument. Is it possible? Is it possible that me in this super fashionable duck shirt is wrong? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, you've seen me trading Tesla. Yeah, once in a while I get things wrong, like a solid 75% of the time. But I think we're in that 25% of the time where I might be right on this one. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, but even in this case, do you care? Because like, what have the financial advisors gotten right in the past couple of years?